Good morning and welcome to another Haskell Kata. Um, we will pick up today where we left off yesterday, the Christmas light Kata. Um, yesterday we uh, followed the instructions. Well, we wrote down the instructions in the code and we created a small interface um, for turning on and turning off and toggling uh, lights in a specific grid. Um, we didn't succeed any tests yet, I think. Um, no, I don't think so. But today we will um, find out what happens when you toggle a light and how many lights in the grid are uh, going to be lit up. Um, I didn't read on uh, from yesterday. Uh, we are still in the same uh, uh, space. Uh, it looks like we did pass one test. And that's the test um, that if we don't toggle anything, the number of lights is um, zero. And it's hard coded. Yeah, I suspected something like that. Uh, but we are uh, going to toggle a lot more lights now. And uh, the test that we defined uh, or trying to see is if you toggle once, turn on a single area, um, afterwards the number of lights is equal to the area uh, that you turned on. So one single action will turn on those lights. That doesn't look too, um, too hard. Uh, but we uh, stopped because we ran out of time and we still need to define uh, get x and also the get y of course the, the coordinates and you get x get y so let's do that here if we have a chord with an x and a y return the x and in the other case, we return Y. Oh. And we have a falsification, yeah, because of course, hard coded return zero, no matter the, uh, the amount of instructions that we have. Um, so what should we do? Um, let's say this is called a and B, yeah. And if we go from minus one to one and from zero to one, because we said the order doesn't matter, we would have something like ah, this is not correct, by the way. The test failed, it will be six. Uh, the reason that it says one is that we are uh, we are taking two here and one here. Okay, so we have to uh, add one at least left left and right and bottom and top should be added. Um, should be incremented by one. Yeah, because if we say turn on uh, only a single uh, lamp, LED, light, yep, uh, then there should be at least one. There is no instruction that doesn't change anything because the range, the coordinate pair is inclusive. Okay. how are we going to do this if we have an instruction that says turn on lights we will uh, have to see whether they are already turned on and if it's the first instruction then it should be no mm. well we could say if we have nothing if it is an empty list, return nothing, but that wouldn't help with recursion. But if we have a turn on,
let's well let's take this code here this should work of course uh, well it is the implementation but if we if this is the area we will maybe we can extract this and just return for any instruction the area so that we know what we are working with that the coordinates are uh, sorted and now of course this is also a correct thing to do even better now the test will succeed if we did this but i'm not sure if that's the correct way to solve it well it's the most direct way to solve it um I think this code is reusable. Um, area of instruction. And then we get the sorted coordinates. So let's, let's add the helper function. I'm not sure what's happening today. We could also say that uh, the normalized instruction would always have them sorted. Maybe that's better. So we don't need to do minimize. We just can say for A and B, they are minimized. So um, let's do this, normalize. Well, we cannot sort this. Uh, that's not the card, that's the instruction. These. Wait, if we do this, Um, X, uh, yeah, so it's left, top, and bottom, right. Uh, right, bottom. What if we take them separately and
Oh my. And toggle. Okay. Now they are always constructed sorted. So we don't need to do all this. We can just say they are always left top and right bottom. Okay, so every instruction will now have the coordinates sorted. Um, okay, let's see what we can do now. Uh, if we have one instruction that turns the lights on, that will be what happens. Um, but how, let's say we toggle, we need to be the, we need to know what the state is and i think we need to know what the state is of every uh, coordinate but um what if we try to combine two uh, instructions and Yeah, no. If we combine two instructions, we also get a grid. So there, there is um, combining instructions will give us a grid, and the grid we need to count. Mm. But I think that if we, uh, yeah, we can have a property that if we Have we turn on and turn off the same uh, coordinates? That will be as if we didn't change anything. No, that's not true. Turning on and turning off will be as if we just did a turn off for the same grid. Because it doesn't matter what happened before. If we say turn off, the lights will be off. So for each, hmm. so if we want to combine instructions, that means that we need to know the overlap between the grids of the uh, instructions. And it, it doesn't matter uh, what happened before. No, it does because in toggle, toggle still matters. So how do we pass this happening? Um, I think the grid should be defined as regions. Regions of lights being turned on and turned off. Hmm. I mean, this doesn't combine. Um, so if we do lights, we need to start off with a grid and a list of instructions, and then alter the grid. Let's have it unused by now.
So if we just allow a grid to be a thing that isn't, doesn't matter, it doesn't change anything yet. Yeah, I'm a bit more silent today. Um, because now I want to be able to pass this on. Um, let's just say that we add a test to explore this. Uh, if we turn on, turn off the same uh, area, it doesn't matter. This should be zero. But turn off, turn on. Oops. Should again be this area. Hmm. Yeah. I think the grid should contain the the state of how many lights are on. And so we need lists of coordinates that are on, I'm guessing. And this should be an empty list because nothing is turned on. So Maybe if we have the instruction because I want to make this recursive, of course. So say we have a grid turned on areas. In the case that we have it turn on, in the case that we have it turn on, we just need to add it. So Yeah, we will compute the lights and just add the coordinates to the areas. Oops. Yeah. And if we Yeah, we still need to uh, calculate overlap. How do we do this? 
Um, because now I'm just moving it around. Um, can we simplify two instructions? Because if we Then we do a very simple one. Say we just take all the coordinates that are uh, there, make a set of it, and then yeah, then we can uh, distinct uh, try and distill later what happens. So we create a set. Wait, do I have set here? Could it be an end set? No, it's a set of Now we need to have all coordinates uh, in all areas. All coordinates in one area means that we take, we go from top left bottom right and we just take uh, everything so uh, say from left to right we take the axis and the y's we take from right to bottom and then we turn x and y for each of those This is um, no, that's right, top to bottom, and ah, this is a set of coordinates. I forgot. And we have now the set, and then we just say how many are there in the set size. Well, that is if the we can add it to the area. Well, let's say we all only take a turn on. Uh, what happens if we have a turn off? Then we have to remove it. Okay, let's do this the other way around for now and just make it a set of coordinates. And add them to the list. So that makes it easier to create the lights. Okay. 
if we uh, do a turn on, then we include in the set wait. this part what we had and what we are going to get and what we are going to get is low coordinates in a and b So we combine everything we have in the lights that we already had, and we combine it with the set from all chords from A and B, because between A and B it's turned on, and that should give us a list of coordinates. But why doesn't this work? Oh. Okay, this should work. Now the turn off would be the same, but then um, just remove them. So set a difference. Now what's what's what is called if you remove it from the set? Uh, I just need to remove it. Yeah, we can delete one. Oh. Yeah, it's this one. What's happening? Okay. Now we don't have toggle implemented yet, but let's not take toggle into account and just continue with what we have. And this should be the turn off, of course. Okay. Now it does work. No, it. Yeah, but this wouldn't be correct. Okay, this was a long. Ah. A long way. And it was a bit slow. So I'm not sure if you really enjoyed watching this, but hey, these are the raw videos. Um, tomorrow we will implement toggle. And then find out uh, after toggling, uh, we would have a correct implementation, but not necessarily a good implementation. And then we can use the loss to decide, a uh, quick spec to de decide what the loss could be, if they are more interesting. And I'm thinking, yeah, of course, if you, uh, you would be able to combine instructions and know that they are negatable. Um, maybe we can use um, areas, uh, a, a list of areas instead of a, a list of coordinates specifically to make it easier and more efficient. But let's see what, uh, what happens. Uh, thank you again for watching um, and I hope to see you in the next video.